It's a sight to behold, and it shines like gold. We feel love. Ooh, My name is Tiago Daja, and uh, I created She Sustainably Humane Earth with uh, my partner Gunjin, uh, Gunjin Mittal, and it first started off as a nonprofit and took many different manifestations since then. Our futuristic plans would be creating urban and rural farms in the U.S. and in India. We chose the acronym SHE um, first and then put the words to it. We're very much so Mother Earth worshippers, so uh, she is very specific to say that we recognize that creation, Mother Earth is called a mother for a reason. You know, we recognize that creation is the feminine spirit and should be exalted. Humane in Sustainable Humane Earth implies that from business to the way we grow food to the way we treat people is all done through humane, empathetic mindfulness we can go and educate in any capacity, whether it's an urban or, urban or rural, we're global citizens. We understand that even on a micro scale in our urban farm, the impact, you know, because we're accessing the prana and the light and the sun and the wind, that has an impact on the global society. And then when we can train through that modality uh, and put it on the internet for subscription or whatever, just like many other companies are doing, then it has a, the broader reach. So we're everywhere. If you have a small little bit to grow your own soil, I was just doing a really simple example. Of I first started with my permaculture design science certification uh, in a uh, small town in Oregon called Eugene. To create a micro Through the process of actually physically working on it, then I actually was able to apply the education. I studied with uh, world-renowned permaculturalist uh, Jeff Lawton in California during an earthworks course. I can completely cultivate a 25-acre property, I can go micro-scale to less than a quarter acre. We don't need huge, big ag monoculture crops because in a very small spot, if you design the system like how the forest operates, you're using a biodiverse network of plants that serve each other. I would say we have over a hundred species of plants within less than a quarter acre. We have three peach trees, we have a pomegranate tree, avocado tree, two guava trees, a locot tree, uh, an array of banana trees that don't put out too many fruits but we use the leaves and things for so many other practical purposes. Three citrus trees, an orange, blood orange and a satsuma. So that's just the trees. So everything underneath the trees is extra. We've got all the vegetable plants you can imagine, edible flowers that also attract beneficial insects. So part of permaculture is stacking functions. How many functions can I get out of one thing? So we're bringing milkweed, which uh, brings in mon monarch butterflies that helps um, pollinate the rest of our fruit trees and fruiting plants. It's also beautiful. It also is extremely needed to cultivate that because of uh, butterfly populations going down. What we're doing can be viewed as a political act. We are looking at, mindfully looking at the society and seeing how you know materialism might be taking over and obviously we live in a corporate capitalistic society. So it's not a, uh, it's not overreaction. It's not an emotional reaction even. We're looking at the problem and in permaculture you see the problem as the solution. We're looking and viewing mindfully the problem and then creating a direct response in action instead of just talking about it, writing about it, being in the streets, talking about it. We're just doing it so that all the other facets that are there that are needed, the street protesters and the, uh, you know, um, the people inside the politics, you know, divine souls doing all that, now we'll all end up having a place to find refuge. Mm -hmm.